Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're heading to the kitchen for a look at some of our favorite beef recipes. The chefs from the Culinary Innovation Center share beef cooking tips for any occasion. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Are you looking for some great new ideas for preparing beef meals? Luckily, our favorite chefs from the Beef Culinary Innovation Center are here to share some great tasting recipes. Let's head on into the kitchen. Like so many cattlemen, I've been out working or feeding cattle on one of those cold winter days, and when the work's all done, you want something to eat that'll warm you from the inside out. And Pam Nash, one of the recipe testers from the Beef Culinary Center, has just the right recipe for us today. Pam, I understand you're going to tell us how to make beef green chili. Yes, Kevin, beef green chili. This recipe is super simple to put together. You use ingredients that you already have in your pantry. Mm -hmm. And best of all, you can use leftover beef. So if you have anything that you didn't eat from last night, you can take it and turn it into beef green chili for tonight. Sounds delicious. I love green chili. Tell us how we get started. So I, what I have going in the pan here is I have one whole onion diced. Okay. I have a whole jalapeno that's been seeded and diced. Perfect. And I have four cloves of garlics that I have minced and you get it in your pan and cook it for about five to seven minutes until the onions become translucent and you get a little bit of color on it. No liquid in there? No liquid at all. Just Very get good. it going in there. And once this is all cooked the way you want it, then you can start adding your other ingredients. Very We're going to start with the beef. Here mm -hmm. I have 12 ounces of cubed brisket all from right. last night. We cubed it up and we'll just dump it in. Like you say, lots of alternatives, roast, whatever. Whatever you have left sure. over from previous nights, just go ahead and dump it all in. Outstanding. The other thing that we have, I have three cups of green chilies. You bet. These you can just get from the store in the can. All right. That's perfect. Dump it now, in. how many is this going to feed ultimately? Clear the sizzle. Well, depending on how much you how like green chili. How much you like to eat? <laughs> exactly. This is going to feed about four. Outstanding. So let's stir up our green chilies, get everything yeah, mixed up in there. Looks and smells delicious. Wow. And our next ingredient, I have one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Okay. Perfect. And dump that in. And colorful too, huh? And very colorful, very healthy for you. So once you get this all mixed up together, okay. you're going to want to put a lid on it. Mm-hmm. And that's basically it. Then and you just, how long are we going to cook it? We're going to let it sit and cook like this for about 25 to 30 minutes. Let all of the flavors develop. Mm -hmm. While you do this, you can be running around with the kids, getting them to practice. Or sitting by fire, whatever. Sitting by fire, <laughs> get, you know, whatever you need to get done. Good. After about half an hour, yeah. everything will be all mixed up and well together. You okay. want to take it off your heat yeah. and take it off. Take your lid off, and we're just going to add two tablespoons of oh, sour cream. You're going to add it in the mixture. And we're going to add it in the mixture, get it all Very mixed good. up, kind of rounds out the flavor, yeah. gives it a little creamy taste. Outstanding. I thought you were just going to put it on top of it, but that's great. No, nope, we're going to mix this in, but certainly if you wanted to sure. put more on extra. there, a little more <laughs> extra sour cream, you Perfect. are more than welcome. Oh, that, that absolutely looks delicious. So mix it up. And it appears that we've got actually a finished product right here. Absolutely. We have a finished product, and we actually garnished. We did put more sour cream on this one. Mm. We topped it with some shredded cheddar cheese, some avocado diced, and some tortilla chips. That's great. What a perfect way to warm yourself from the inside out. Thanks for bringing us this great recipe. Thank you. To make your own beef green chili and find other great beef recipes, visit the website beefitswhatsfordinner.com or you can always find them on our website. That's cattlemantocattlemen.org. As we head into the spring and summer months, why not add some fresh flavors to your nightly meal? 
Chef Chenoa French of the Beef Culinary Innovation Center at NCBA is with us to talk to us about a beef and asparagus pasta toss. Absolutely. Tell us what you have here. Well, this is one of our quick weeknight meals. Mm -hmm. And as most people think about ground beef, they think of tacos, sure. spaghetti sauce, something that they just throw together. And we want to give them another option. This okay. is also one of those meals that you can have on the, the, on the table for a family of four in less than 30 minutes. Perfect. So we're going to start with the pasta. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to boil about six cups of water. You need okay. enough. We're going to use three cups of uncooked pasta, mm -hmm. bow tie variety. This is a, um, a whole wheat one oh. and you can use whichever one you want. Sure. Um, when we talk about boiling pasta, we want to make sure that we add enough salt to the water. Really? Um, the kind of the, the trick or the tip that we were given through culinary school is make it taste like the ocean. Really? If you don't add salt to the water, it pulls the salt out of the pasta mm. and puts it into the water because they like that equilibrium. And then you'll that. have a less flavorful pasta. So salt so, your water, salt boil your water. the pasta. Yeah. So and what we're doing with um, this, we kind of do a two for one step. So you'll throw your pasta in, cook for about 10 minutes, and then the last three to four minutes that your pasta would be cooking, you throw your one inch pieces of asparagus. Right with the pasta. Right with the pasta. So you cut them up and have everything ready. This recipe is really important to get all your things together because okay. it goes together really quickly. Okay. So one, e one inch pieces of um, asparagus, tossed in the last three to four minutes, you drain them all together, okay. and then just rinse them in cold water. Gotcha. So that way it kind of stops. We call it blanching and shocking your vegetables. We'll keep your nice green color as we go through this. Very good. So get these together and, and kind of put them aside. So it's looking good so far. I love yes. asparagus. <laughs> all right, then we have our, our ground beef, just a pound of ground beef, okay. and go ahead and brown it on the stove. You can brown that on the stove while your pasta is boiling. Gotcha. Um, take it out of the pan, pour off the drippings. We recommend using 90% lean and above, sure. um, so you won't have a lot. But go ahead and put that aside on the bowl. Okay. And now we're ready to get cooking. So right. um, hot skillet, and again, I like to use a larger skillet and toss everything into one stove instead of having to toss things back into the bowl. So gotcha. I use a little bit larger one. If you don't have one at home, you can kind of go the other way. Yeah, okay. um, we're going to start with a little bit of olive oil, yeah. so about three tablespoons of olive oil. All right. um, go ahead and put this in there. If you don't want to use olive oil, you don't have to. Okay. Um, Got your heat on kind of low, but what we're going to want to do is we've got some shallots. Oh, yeah. And this is about a quarter of a cup of shallots. Okay. Uh, minced. If you don't can't find shallots, you can use onions. Yep. They're all kind of in the same family. These are just a little stronger. Very good. So go Get ahead some and... some flavor to that pasta. Yeah. Huh? Toss these in there. Okay. Um, you want to make sure your, your oil is a little warm um, before you start adding stuff in there. As you can gotcha. hear, it's starting to sizzle. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. The vegetables will absorb less oil if it's hot. I see. So um, there's your shallots. The yep. next thing we're going to add is two to three cloves of minced garlic. Love uh, garlic. More if you like it, less if you don't. Yeah. So that goes in. I smell it already. It <laughs> smells great. And then to top that off, we're going to do just a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. All right. All right. And how long are you going to cook this then? You know, this is, this is quick. So it kind of okay. depends on, on how hot your pan is. You're going to want to, as we talk about either sweating or, or kind of reducing down those, you want to bring out their flavor by yep. the heat. Yep. And you almost want to make your shallots that translucent mm. as you can start to smell them. You don't Smells want to cook great. them too long because otherwise you'll burn the garlic. And also olive oil has a lower smoke point than most oils because oh, you don't want them too hot. Gotcha. So that's why you kind of keep it on lower, gotcha. lower heat. It so, smells great, Shanoa. Yeah, you'll give it, give them a couple stirs, mm -hmm. let them get nice and translucent. And then as this happens, yeah. we're going to add what are we our next? Yeah, ground beef. We're going to add that here. back in. So this will go back into the pan right. and it'll help you... Um, it's going to start heating back up. Gotcha. You want to make sure this has probably only been out of the pan for, you know, maybe 10 minutes I as see. you work still through. Warm. Still warm. Yeah. Still warm. So yeah. you kind of want to mix all your garlic wow. and the shallots through that. Yeah. Um, get a little bit of the olive oil and the salt and pepper all incorporated. It smells great. Yeah, that's <laughs> outstanding. So once you're there, yeah. and I talked about, we're going to do all of this will go into here. In the same way. Wow. Yeah, if your pan's not big enough at home, then you can go the other way. That's great. So what I'll do is I'll slowly slide all these guys in there. Yeah. And the olive oil is kind of working as your sauce okay. that's in there. Yep. You can throw that right down there. So, and this comes the toss part. So gotcha. you can either do it in a big bowl or, that's right. or do it in the skillet. I want to see you kind of <laughs> tossing it on the skillet, maybe. I, I don't know if this skillet's <laughs> quite big enough. I'm going to end up with pasta tossed all over the counter, Kevin. Um, uh, that's so great. So you'll toss this all together, and you can either serve it family style yeah. directly out of the skillet, or you could portion it up. Um, Looks great. Yeah, as you top off just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. So oh, you'll sprinkle right just on right top. on the top. That gotcha. tops off every pasta dish, Absolutely. Right? Or and a lot of Parmesan yeah. cheese. <laughs> and here and is a single is, portion with a nice great. piece of bread. I've got to try this. I, I have That's to tell you that I love 
uh, asparagus, and uh, you're, you're doing all the things right here. Yeah, and the, the perfect part, if you don't like bow tie pasta or you can't find it, you can use um, wagon wheel or some of the spiral. Just make sure that they're smaller so they'll fit on your fork easier. So we recommend not using full-on spaghetti with it. That's great, though. What, what, what a quick and easy dish and a healthy one at that. Yep, and it reheats perfectly for lunch the next day if you need it to. Thanks for a great, unique idea. For this recipe and others featuring great tasting beef, head to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. When it comes to your land, it pays to be smart. At New Holland, smart means giving you a wide range of options to fit your needs, like smooth cutting, plug free conditioning, and versatility. Smart means putting more hay in the bale and leaving less in the field. It also means providing exceptional after-sale support and growing a legacy that goes far beyond equipment. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. I'm Sheila Carges. Um, this is my husband, Brock. We have two girls, Karina and Jessica. Both girls can pull cattle, doctor, process anything that we need them to do. Using products that help keep the calves healthy, it helps my parents to be less stressful, it helps them to be at home more, and it helps pay more bills when you don't have to worry about sick cattle. Let's say 98, 99% of our cattle are high risk. We've never seen a response due to a metaphylaxis like we have with the Draxon. I think Draxon has a major role in any operation as far as your viability and your long-term outlook. And how do you quantify having a peace of mind to take a vacation for a week or leave work early to go watch a basketball game? You can't quantify that. Important safety information for Draxon. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Do not use in dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Effects on reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined. a time when Oktoberfest is celebrated in many places across our nation and Shanoa French is with us from the Culinary Innovations team with a recipe that fits perfectly with Oktoberfest. Is that right? It does. We're going to we're going to talk a little bit about bratwurst style and some sauerkraut. Perfect. So, let's start here. We actually have the sauerkraut working first for us and um, this recipe is kind of a play on the canned sauerkraut that you might buy in the grocery oh, really? store. Mm -hmm. um, it's a quick pickling, takes about 10 minutes wow. and allows you to make as much or as little as you need. We, do, we need just a small amount for this recipe. So Here I am a German and I've never even never heard of that. You've never made your own. Well now you can learn. Yes. So this starts and why I wanted to show you this part of the recipe is it shows that it kind of disappears in the pan okay. and that's okay you haven't done anything wrong. I so see. that's why we want to show not to add more because it'll mess up and you'll end up with extra at the end. So this is about three cups of coleslaw mix okay. and it's just shredded cabbage that you can wow. buy in the grocery store yeah. so if you want to use a head and shred it yourself you can yeah. or for convenience just buy three cups of shredded okay. um, it's a little bit of water mm -hmm. a little bit of brown sugar a little bit of vinegar and some caraway seeds really yeah so that's all find it takes them, that's all it takes find them in the in the spice aisle wow. there a um, little bit of water you put the lid on it and you let them cook for about 10 minutes mm. and you'll start to see that the cabbage becomes translucent oh, and good. that's what we're looking for Very so good. I'm gonna let this sit here for a little bit and we're gonna talk about about, the, about the beef and the yeah. sausage, yeah. So most people, I think, think of Oktoberfest, they think of the long, more brat style. Right. Um, this is going to be a patty, okay. so it's easier, and, and it makes dinner for four, and you don't have to worry about trying to stuff them or do casings or any of Perfect. that. Yeah. So um, you're going to start with a pound of ground beef, okay. whatever you choose sure. at the house, and we're going to add just a couple quick ingredients, and then we'll use it on the stove. So okay. we're going to start this with a quarter of a cup of milk. Really? Yeah, so a little bit of milk, of and yeah. I like to kind of flatten out the ground beef okay. in the bowl so that you're even dispersing of the spices as you lay them okay. in here. So next is going to be a little bit of powdered garlic. Okay. So kind of sprinkle that through. Yeah. Get it good and dispersed. Yeah, good. I try to. Um, salt and pepper. Okay. That's just your standard in the house. That's easy. You bet. And then here comes the, the ones yeah, that are a little bit different. I don't even recognize those. So this one is allspice. Okay. So the nut that you, a lot of people think of probably with cookies and, sure. and pumpkin pie. So we're going to add that in there. Okay. Um, a little bit of cardamom. Really? Yeah. For those people that like chai tea mm -hmm. and some of that kind of stuff. Interesting. Just some of that flavors that okay. you'll get. And then a little bit of mace. 
is okay. your last one. So Very just good. a touch of that. We're going to add that. Well, you've just taught top. me something about spices today. <laughs> That's only half of it. And then you're going to mix them up. Um, if you want to go ahead at home, use your hands, kind of get in there and make sure that everything is, is dispersed nicely. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that the insides are just as seasoned as the outsides. Okay. So, um, Usually go ahead and, and do this with your hands. Sure. You don't want to over mix them because the more you mix them, the tougher your patties will oh, become. Oh, I see. Sure. Yeah. So kind of give them a good good mix. Sure. Um, and then you're basically going to just divide this into four. Okay. Kind of real quick. And then press them into patties. Just patties, just like you do a hamburger. Just like you would hamburgers. Sure. Yep, absolutely. That's easy enough to do. So that's, that's kind of the start of this. Yes. We're going to move in. I've got some start and we're going to show you what we do with the Looks next. Looks like it, yeah. So um, we have three of them on here. Uh -huh. What we want to talk about is you'll start two of them and you want to just cook them until they're they're golden brown on the bottom. Okay. So you want to make sure that they're cooked all the way through. Sure. So 160 degrees internally. And when you're using a thermometer at home, you want to stick the thermometer through horizontally oh. to make sure you're not touching the bottom of the pan Very good. for food safety. Yes. And we know that juices are not a clear determinant for doneness. So when they, a lot of people have said if you clear, run, yeah. and that's truly not... Not food the safe. So indicator. best okay. indicator is to go ahead and use a thermometer. Um, once they're about halfway cooked, you're gonna flip them over. Okay. So that way you can make wow. sure that they get seared on both sides. Those are looking good. Yeah. And once you have um, a nice golden brown, mm -hmm. the next step, and we're gonna go ahead and start plating one of these, okay. is you're gonna take a piece of Swiss cheese. Sure. So the rest of the build on on these um, sandwiches, and we're using pretzel buns. Oh. And I think a lot of times when you go over to Germany, they think of pretzels sure. and beer yeah. and and bratwurst. So that's kind of how it ties it all together. Very good. Pretzel buns are kind of the hot rave right now. I've noticed that. Yeah. So you add a little bit of mustard. Okay. Either English mustard or German mustard, whatever you like on the bottom. Sure. And if you give this a minute or two in a hot pan, your cheese will kind of melt, melt. down around it. Sure. So we're going to pretend that that's, that's done. Melted. Yeah. Yes. And you're going to stick one right here on top. Very good. And then you're going to take a little bit of your coleslaw that you made, or your sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Yeah. Originally say. coleslaw. Yeah. And um, top right there on the top of your. Your burger. Wow. And you're going to go ahead. That's a nice new twist on, on, on the old hamburger yeah. and uh, give you something to celebrate around October. Just a little different flavor profile. Well, it looks to me like uh, that may be even something to try in the summer months, too. Thanks for bringing this recipe. Welcome. For this and other outstanding recipes, visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com or our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. The Case I-8 Spring Sales Event is on now, making it a great time to get the equipment you need for this season. With 0% financing for 60 months on all Farmall and Maxim Series tractors, as well as our complete line of hay tools, you can turn everyday chores into everyday savings. But hurry, the Spring Sales Event ends June 30th, 2014. For more information, ask your local Case I-8 dealer or go to caseih.com slash special offers. There's something wrong. His head is down. He's clearly stressed. He's worried sick about BRD. That's why there's prescription Zactran for BRD treatment and control in high-risk cattle. Get a rapid response plus 10-day treatment and control in a single dose so you can stop worrying and get back to business. For use in cattle only, do not treat cattle within 35 days of slaughter. Because a discard time in milk has not been established, do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older or in calves to be processed for veal. The effects of Zactran on bovine reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined. Don't worry yourself sick. Talk to your veterinarian about a real alternative for BRD treatment and control. Because it's critical, it's Zactran. From Marielle, a leading animal health company. It's a fast-paced world these days for everyone, especially for families. And making meals fast and portable is sometimes required. Pam Nash, one of the recipe testers with the Beef Culinary Center, joins us now with just the thing for busy lifestyles. 
Pam, looks like you're going to build something that is a family favorite of ours when we go to livestock shows, and that's on-the-go beef tacos. Is that right? That's right. This recipe is a lot of fun. It's quick and easy. It's easy to customize to anybody's taste, mm -hmm. and they're just super fun. You can do them at barbecues. You can do them at birthday parties. They're really quick and easy to do. Well, let's get started. Okay, so we started, actually, we took a pound of ground beef, mm -hmm. and I used my favorite taco seasoning mix and three-quarters cup of water. Water, put it in a pan, cooked it all up. You cook your beef to 160 mm -hmm. for food safety and mix it all together and you get your beef mixture. Sure. Once you get your beef mixture, um, take your favorite chip. Yep. Today we have uh, nacho cheese chips. Sure. And then you can fill it with beef and then fill it with all of your favorite toppings. And again, no dishes to deal with when we're done. No dishes, easy to do. Very so good. first we'll go ahead. And put in a couple spoonfuls or forkfuls here. You bet. Or half a bowl. Or whatever half you prefer. a bowl, whatever you want to do yeah. of your beef. I know my wife normally, we, we cook this in advance and then she has it in the refrigerator or cooler. And then we just put it in a crock pot to warm it up in time for, uh, for lunch meal. For lunch, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So once you get your beef in there, you can top it with your toppings. Today here, we have tomatoes. Yeah. I have shredded cheddar cheese. I have avocados, diced avocados. I have some chopped up cilantro. Oh, yeah. I have shredded lettuce. I have salsa, of you course. You bet. And I have some green onions. Mm, it's delicious. And if I was making this for me to right. eat after what? my beef, I'm going to start start with uh, diced tomatoes. Okay, perfect. And just throw those in. Oh, sure. Take all the tomatoes. <laughs> all the tomatoes. right, what else? And then I'm going to put in my shredded cheddar cheese because right. I love cheese. Yeah. Oh, I really yeah, love cheese. Yeah, you do <laughs> love cheese. And then I'm going to finish off with avocado. Well, you just will take all I the avocados as well. might as well take well. avocados. That's delicious. And then that's your serving bowl as well. That's how you eat it. Now, speaking of serving bowl, it looks like you did a couple of variations that you could actually eat at home, but these look a little different. Can you tell us more about these? Absolutely. We did five different variations on this. This first one we have is our chili cheese taco. And we use a corn chip. And instead of the taco seasoning, we used uh, chili seasoning in mm. the beef. The second one we have here is our Mediterranean. Mm. Instead of the taco seasoning, we use two teaspoons of Greek seasoning. And then we use a multi-grain chip. Oh, wow. The third one we have is our ranch. We use, we take out the taco seasoning. We use a ranch packet Perfect. into the beef. And we use a ranch chip. The fourth one we have is the meat and potatoes taco. Oh. So we take out the taco seasoning, we use a gravy mix in the beef, and then we serve it over your favorite potato, potato chip. chips. And the last one, one of my favorites, mm -hmm. is the cheeseburger taco. So we take out the taco seasoning, we actually add ketchup and mustard into the beef, and then we serve it over our favorite cheese puff. That is delicious and so easy, and as you say, so much fun. Yeah. Thanks so much for bringing us this uh, great recipe with beef. Thank you. For on-the-go beef tacos and other great beef recipes, visit the website beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Or you can always find them on our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We're back in the kitchen with Laura Majors, one of the recipe testers from the Beef Culinary Center. And Laura, I see you brought the slow cooker with you today. You know, we use a slow cooker a lot in our household. Why do you think it's become such a popular way to uh, fix beef? Yeah, Kevin, it's a popular way because you can take some of the uh, larger cuts from the shoulder, from the rump, from the round, and you can cook it all day and come home and at least part of the dinner's already made. You bet. And then you c the reason we call it four-way is that you can take that beef, shred it, and then add different sauces or different ingredients oh. to finish it off with a, to a lot of different flavors from different cultures, and we're going to show you four different ways to prepare it quickly. Well, that sounds very exciting. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing we want to do is make sure that the beef is done. Okay. Um, we, we use what we call fork tender. Uh -huh. You're going to pull the pieces out of the slow cooker, yep. and you put it on like this, but I want you to see how oh, wow. easy this sure. fork goes in, and that's fork done. Very good. And then to shred it, you can just take a couple of table forks mm -hmm. and pull it apart, oh, yeah. and you can see how easy just that pull pulls apart. Oh, sure. And you'll want to do that to the whole roast. Okay. And then you can make several dinners with this, or one, depending on how many people you have to feed. Okay. And so now you've already got some shredded roast beef, it right. looks like. 
Yeah, we have a little bit shredded here. We're going to show you the Indian, uh, East Indian way that we would do this. We're going to add just a little tiki masala sauce. Okay. Stir it up mm -hmm. in there. And then this is what it's going to look like. Just sauce and depending on your finish, that? that's you're going to use either salsa or tiki masala. Or for a Mexican dish, you could use any of your salsas sure. or Mexican sauces. Um, barbecue sauce also sure. works. And then you'd want to cover this up, put it in the microwave for a minute to heat everything up. You might have to stir it once, put it back in, and then your meat is all heated. And for those people who want to go around the world uh, while staying in the comfort of their own home, you've got several different alternatives right, for we us. we do, and this is great to show kids how to cook. So they're gonna get a lot of different ideas about what they can eat from different cultures. Mm -hmm. And with this one piece of beef, you can do several have a party and roll out a whole bunch of different sauces from different countries and well, ingredients. Well, well tell us go. about these. Okay, thanks. Um, this is an Asian piece. It's got some hoisan sauce. You can also mm. use teriyaki, mix that in. It also has some cucumbers, a uh, few peanuts, and some carrots. Okay. Then moving on to the barbecue Perfect. sauce. It's a barbecue sandwich, whole mm -hmm. grain bun, very healthy for your family. Um, What's in the pita? The pita, and you can also use naan bread, okay. would be the East Indian oh. preparation that we prepared. Okay. And add some yogurt, some pistachio nuts, some of your other vegetables. Interesting. And Wonderful finally, we've got, sandwich. it looks like a uh, kind of a Mexican burrito. Yeah, it could be a taco, it could be a burrito. Uh, shredded beef is really good with Mexican food. Add some avocados, some tomatoes, some onions, and there you have it. So folks Very that easy. want to do multiple alternatives for the same meal or just not eat leftovers over and over and create some variety in leftovers, this is a great option. Yeah, it is. It really is. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you, Kevin. For this and other outstanding beef recipes, visit the website beefitswhatsfordinner.com or you can always find them on our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. This is yours, and so is what grows there. Not theirs, or theirs, yours. You need this to fight this, and this to grow more this. Because the more of this you feed them, the less this you spend on that, which leaves more of this here. Don't let them take this from you. Chaparral takes care of weeds and brush, and that's that. To truck guys, the truck is everything. And when you put them in charge of making an unbeatable truck, good things happen. This is the Ram 1500, the 2014 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. And first ever back-to-back -back winner. Guts, glory, Ram. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out BeefUSA.org. You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus, link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at BeefUSA.org. Join America's cattle industry for the 2014 Summer Conference in Denver, Colorado. It's a great opportunity to meet your fellow cattlemen and women, plus spend time planning for the future of your operation in our great industry. Bring the whole family and join us in Denver for the 2014 Cattle Industry Summer Conference, July 30th through August 2nd. For details, call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us at beefusa.org. If you're like me, football season's always a time to enjoy family, friends, and food. Kristen Ledgerwood from the Culinary Innovations team is with us, and let's talk tailgating with beef, Kristen. 
Of course. Well, I think a lot of people think of beef to take when they're tailgating, but I don't think a lot of people think of brisket as an option. Burgers normally. Right. Yeah. Burgers are, are, are a go-to. So sure. why not try something different and do a little brisket? Um, this recipe today, we're doing a braised brisket. Okay. We're going to make some street tacos. Okay. Um, but we're going to do everything um, besides building your tacos ahead of time. Perfect. So you can just take it with you. Enjoy the game. And enjoy and, the game. Yeah, enjoy the friends. That's fantastic. And yeah. so you've already got a brisket started here it looks like I did so I've got a I went ahead added a little bit of olive oil into my stock pot okay. and I'm starting to brown the um, both sides of my brisket um, hey, for somebody who likes to barbecue brisket you're you're worrying me a little bit when you put the the brisket in a stock pot and start browning you're wondering it. about so it I'm, aren't you I, I, I am I'm uh, you're gonna have to sell me on this concept I love barbecue brisket well this is uh, a braised recipe, so we're going to add some liquid to it, okay. and we're going to get it, um, cook it until it's fork tender, Okay. Um, which it's just going to melt in your mouth. Very good. So it's another alternative to what you're traditionally used sure. your brisket for. Smoking or barbecue, yeah. Right. So, um, so like I said, we're just going to, we've just gotten this a little bit nice and brown. We're okay. going to brown both sides of those. Sure. And then we've got a little bit of that olive oil left in there. Okay. And we're going to start adding some of our aromatics to ah, the recipe. Give it a little extra flavor and so That's forth. That's right. What do we have in terms of aromatics? We have some onions. Okay, sure. So we've added, we've got sliced, sliced some onions in there. About how much? Just several? Just a, a, about a half a cup of onions. Okay, that's good. And some minced garlic. Perfect. So this is all going to mix in there and it's going to get nice and flavorful. You're going to start to smell it. A lot of times people wonder what you're cooking and right. it's, it's those onions and garlic that yeah. really start to make the smell. It smells, yeah, I, I love, I mean, I love those two anyway. Yeah. I don't know if we ever think of them with, with brisket, but uh, so, so you just, you're, you're just going to kind of cook those for about how long then? Um, just so they're um, sauteed enough to a little translucent. We're really just going to, about four or five minutes or okay. so, All right. um, just to bring out that um, that lovely smell that you usually get with it. Absolutely. And then we're going to go ahead and add our brisket back in oh. on top of our onions. Okay. Okay. Very so good. we'll do that. And then you've got uh, some other things here, and I'm not sure what you've brought us here. Well, everybody, when they go tailgating, usually has some beer around, okay, right? Okay, sure. So you take one of those bottles of beer that you're going to... Uh, that you were going to drink. you were going to drink, <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and add it to our brisket. Okay. So we've just got one bottle of beer. Just as kind of a tenderizer, or what, what, what else this is, is it going to help yeah. break it down, but it's also um, going to be flavor. some flavor, yeah. a lot of flavor. Tomatillo salsa. Okay. So you can just find this in the grocery store, just a jar, um, and you're going to add some of that salsa in there. Very good. Now you can tell it's kind of quieted down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to um, stir that in there. Okay. And how long are, are you going to cook um, all these things then? This is going to go for about two and a half to three hours. Oh, wow. But our key is looking for fork tenderness. Okay. So you're going to stick a fork um, in there, and you're looking for the brisket to actually um, pull away from the fork. Very good. And that's when you know it's at that nice tenderness And stage, speaking so. of fork tender, uh, did, you, did you bring a sample for us? I did. <laughs> I, I thought did. I saw that. <laughs> so we, we went ahead and cooked up a uh, brisket beforehand oh, for wow. you all. And so what you do after it gets to that fork tenderness stage, we're going to take the brisket out. We're going to mm -hmm. go ahead and slice it. Oh, yeah. The sauce we're going to reduce down. We're going to make a little bit thicker, and okay. we're going to add the brisket back into it. One more time. So and what does that do? It's going to add a little bit extra moisture, Flavoring. and then you're also your flavor is going to hold wow. into your brisket. So. And then you're going to take that uh, in a crock pot or something to just keep it warm. Is yep. that right? Whatever you usually travel to that, that you can keep warm at, at uh, while you're tailgating, yeah. just go ahead and put it in there. And then while you're your, um, we making your tacos. Yeah, tell us about the uh, the tacos themselves. Sure. Yeah. So you pick your favorite corn tortilla, flour okay. tortilla, whatever you know your um, you like at the store. Pick that up. We're going to add the brisket back in there, and then some of our great um, toppings, some salsa, cilantro, green onions, whatever you feel like. Looks delicious, and so. it's it's especially easier. Just cuts down the stress and the hassle uh, at the tailgating party itself. Kristen, sure. you've taken tailgating to altogether different level this fall with beef. <laughs> Thanks for bringing us this Trying recipe. To make it easier. So thanks for having me, Kevin. You bet. For this and other outstanding recipes, visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com or you can go to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Your herd, your business, your family. 
You've always protected what matters most, so you know how important vaccinations are for healthy cattle. And with Vista vaccines from Merck Animal Health, you know you're covered. No other vaccine works like Vista. Only Vista gives you complete dual-action pneumonia protection and complete one-dose fetal protection for the entire pregnancy. Protect what matters most. Talk to your veterinarian or animal health supplier about Vista. Ever wonder where the beef checkoff dollar goes and what it buys? The Federation of State Beef Councils is made up of the 45 qualified state beef councils that collect the $1 per head beef checkoff. Each council keeps control of 50 cents and sends 50 cents to the Cattlemen's Beef Board for use in national beef checkoff programs. Many states also choose to send a portion of their share to the Federation to expand national and international efforts. As a division of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, the Federation of State Beef Councils works to support an effective state and national partnership, helping to increase beef demand through research, promotion, and education. Because producers themselves direct these programs, your beef checkoff dollars are in good hands. Learn more about the Federation of State Beef Councils by visiting beefusa.org. One of the great things about beef is that beyond steak or hamburger, there's so many different ways to prepare it. And Laura Majors, one of the recipe testers from the Beef Culinary Center, is with us to share a great and satisfying beef recipe. Now, Laura, I see that you've brought us a one-pan beef dish, perfect for dads like me that hate doing dishes. Is that, that right? That's right. My husband loves this because he is the dishwasher in our <laughs> household and we get busy and we need some things that are simple too. So that's great. this can take you from start to finish in 25 to 30 minutes and then one pan goes into the sink. So it is really quick and easy. That's outstanding, especially with me <laughs> using paper plates to, to, to eat <laughs> off of. Go. Well, let's get started. <laughs> okay, well, we've, um, in order to save some time, we've already prepared the beef dish to a certain level. Okay. This would be at the point where you're taking the lid off after the noodles have already cooked. So we okay. start with the beef and some mushrooms, sliced mushrooms, okay. and then we add some garlic and some thyme. We make sure that those are cooked to 160 for ground beef. Okay. And then we're going to just add about a cup and a half or four, a can of beef stock. Okay. Uh -huh. And noodles and the noodles are uncooked at this point then you bring it up to a boil put the lid on mm -hmm. and this is what you have in about eight to ten minutes don't cook the noodles separately just throw it all in there that's, that's right that's how how we end up with one pan at the end so we're at the point where you know we all need our vegetables okay. so we're going to add some peas if to you that insist. <laughs> if i insist huh Good. so you want to add your peas to that yeah and some sour cream because oh, that you're going to cook cook with the peas for about two to three minutes. Okay. They, we can use frozen. You can also use fresh. Yes. Add the sour cream, about a half a cup. Okay. Stir that so in. Stir in that. You also want to stir in some Dijon mustard. Oh wow! With that, gives it a beautiful kick, flavor. Huh? Yeah, no kidding. And that mixes with all of your juices that yes. are in the pan. Okay. And that's your dish. That's your full it's that dish. Simple. It's that simple. And then how long will you cook that? This is once everything's all blended, mm -hmm. it's done. It's hot and it's wow, done. Wow, ready to serve. That's right. And it looks like we've got a uh, finished product over here. Is that right? We do. We have a finished product. We have it with ground beef on the left. Mm -hmm. And then over here, you'll see it with some top sirloin. And that recipe is also as an option uh, on our website. Very, very flexible. Laura, thanks so much for bringing this Absolutely. easy and fast recipe to us. Great. For one dish beef stroganoff and other easy beef recipes, visit the website beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Or you can always find them on our website. That's cattleman to cattleman .org. Eating beef with breakfast is a nutritious and tasty way to start the day. But it isn't always the easiest thing to prepare when you first wake up in the morning. 
Shinoa French of the Beef Culinary Innovation Center is with us here today to tell us about a beef recipe that's both easy and tasty pr to prepare for either breakfast or brunch. Is that correct? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. We're going to talk through a frittata. And a lot of people probably aren't familiar with a frittata. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> it's similar. It fits kind of in the omelet or quiche family. Okay. It's just crustless. So that kind of takes some of the fat component out of it. Um, okay. First thing we're going to talk through, I kind of started a little bit. Okay. So so, um, for the sake of time, but we've got a non-stick skillet, All right. and the most important thing when you're choosing your skillet is choose one that's oven proof. Ah. And so, if you have a plastic handle or something it's like that, be a problem. yeah, because it is going to go into the oven. <laughs> okay. So, go I ahead see. and preheat your oven right. to 350, so yep. that gets hot while you do the rest of the stuff. Okay. Um, I went ahead and started. Um, the beginning of this recipe calls for four new potatoes, okay. and you um, cut them into quarters or slices, thin enough so that they'll cook. And, and again, you have how, how much zucchini and onion in there? Um, there's one. And I'll I'll oh, talk okay, about that gotcha. here in a minute. So cut these up and you're going to start with them in the pan I with see. water and a lid. Gotcha. Cook them for about 10 minutes. Take them out and hold them aside mm. and um, drain your water off. And okay. then what we did in here, we threw gotcha. a pound of ground beef in here, yep. um, a whole small zucchini sliced, mm. and a half of a yellow onion. Do we so have you, to put the zucchini in? You do have okay. to add it. You could do, well, okay, I'll let you choose another vegetable, okay, but you right. have to choose a vegetable. Okay. It could be a red bell pepper or something else. Um, but what most important thing is you want to cook your beef, yep. um, drain it if you need to. Um, we used a 90% lean, so we're pretty good sure. here. Salt, uh, season it with a little salt and pepper okay. so that it's all done. And this is pretty much, if you wanted to put this in an omelet, that components is all completely done. Oh, gotcha. okay. So once that's all done, yep. then we're going to go ahead and move to your eggs. So right. this is just six large eggs. Oh. Put them in here and you whisk them together. No milk or anything? No milk or anything, just okay. six large eggs. So after you have that, you're going to take some fresh basil, mm -hmm. and this gives it a real nice fresh aroma that you, you'll smell here in a minute. So okay. about three tablespoons, and if you like more or less, add it as you will. I always put it in here and stir it a little bit so okay. it gets evenly distributed oh, in I here. Yep. So I'm going to do a little of this. Very um, you can do it with a fork if you want to. Sure. And what you're going to do is also add a little bit of salt and pepper. Uh huh. And I'm going to add it in here. Gotcha. So that we. Um, Even though we've already salt and peppered the. the yeah, yep. the recipe calls you to do a little bit at the beginning sure. to start it, and then a little bit at, um, when you add it to the egg Very mixture. Good. It Very makes good. sure that everything's thoroughly incorporated in here. Very good. So. There's, here goes Six the fun eggs. part. Six eggs, yep, okay. Yeah, and a little bit of fresh basil. Yeah. Um, you're going to go ahead and just pour it over the top. Ah, yeah. And kind of like make sure that it gets all oh, mixed in. Because you want the egg, what it'll do when we put it in the oven, is it will, um, the fat in there kind of fluffs. I and it, it'll grow on us. Gotcha. Um, a third of a cup of Italian cheeses. Oh, a perfect. nice white cheese. I like cheese. Or yeah. a half a cup, whatever you prefer. Or if you're doing it at Kevin's <laughs> house, that's what you get. So now what I'm going to do is this is going to go ahead and go in the oven. Okay. And um, as we talk about the magic of TV. Wow, look at that. Here comes one. A microwavable dish. Yeah. <laughs> and this one goes in. We'll get this stuff out of the way for sure. us. Sure. Um, what I, if you want to go ahead and grab that plate. Oh, absolutely. Um, you can either, if you want to serve it as a whole family style, uh -huh. these things will slide directly out on a plate. Okay. Or we've cut them and we're just oh, going to take a piece out of there for you. Look at that. So this, as we talk about, it's a crustless. And it's got the nice, the eggs fluff up in there. Wow. And you've got ground beef and all your other vegetables. So well, I've got to try this. Yeah. Um, about how how many people will this serve, Shinoa? This one will f serve four to six, depending mm -hmm. on uh, how big of a, of a piece you want for breakfast, how many people are eating. And then we've paired it with some nice berries for your anti antioxidants and some orange juice if you want it. That's perfect. You know, I'll tell you what, I think of bacon and sausage and ham, but I'll be honest, we don't do a lot of hamburger or beef for breakfast. This is delicious. Well, and it's that simple way as you, as you think about using it, you can kind of take this to a little bit of a Mexican version if you want to do stewed tomatoes and chilies and, and a little that. different cheese too. So it's a, it's a great brunch option as Mother's Day and Easter comes around. Thanks so much for coming again. Thanks. Thanks for having me. To take a look at some of the other great tasting beef and breakfast ideas that include beef, head to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. This isn't a job, it's a calling. Your hard work helps feed the world. Being linked to those who care for the land is our calling. For more than 175 years, John Deere has been a proud partner of the cattle business. That's why we bring you special NCBA member discounts, so you can get the right equipment. Strong, rugged, versatile, and ready to work hard. Talk to your John Deere dealer to learn more about your NCBA member discounts. 
John Deere, committed to the land, committed to your success. Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Bend Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer, one that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged built using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a 2x4 rectangle tube frame. There's a 1 inch gap between the side and floor, so there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Bend Trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute or other equipment. Tough and practical, that's Big Bend Trailers, designed and built by a working cattleman. You can rely on and trust Big Bend Trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBendTrailers.com. Big Bend Trailers, built cattlemen tough. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. There's always seemed to be folks who need to say something good, even at the worst of times. Like Mrs. Custer might have said, well, you know, on the bright side, at least he was wearing clean undies. Well, in the spring gather, we went out to find a 300-pound steer that had evaded us. We named him Rompy. We never found him that day, but we did discover a leak in the water line, which, on the bright side, made the ride worth it. Well, the next day we went out early and found him with some cows. All went well and we sorted him off and hauled him to the headquarters here to hold him overnight for the sale the next day. Pretty good morning, I was thinking, by gosh. And then Rompy came unglued. He could see daylight through this pipe gate and into the loading alley. He took four runs at it and I ran around the front to frighten him back and it didn't work and on his fifth try he crashed over the top. I dove out of the way and I looked back as he sailed over me, over my shoulder and I remember thinking, this must be what a torpedo looks like when it's leaving the submarine. Well, we finally got him caught again and hog tied, but where we were was unreachable by a trailer. So I rode back here with my horse and left him and got the pickup and I went back down to get the boys and Rompy. Well, he was too heavy to lift and he was still on the fight. So after much cowboy cogitation, we took two eight foot two by 12s and laid a ramp from the tailgate down to Rompy. Well, we tried to push him up those boards, but he didn't slide. So I dug through my box of rescue stuff and came up with a come along. We chained it over the gooseneck turnover ball and pulled a cable between the boards and ran it through a soft rope we'd put over the hog tie and began cranking. I pushed and we drug Rompy into the bed of the pickup an inch and a grunt at a time. All three of us looked like we'd been drugged through a knot hole. On the bright side, he could have weighed 500 pounds, or we could have been grape farmers and we'd have never been able to load a 300 pound raisin. <laughs> There's nothing to tie to. This is Baxter Black. From out of his mind, out there. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. 
When we switched over to the uh, Perino products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right. Whether it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real and feeding my family a home-cooked meal that's important to me. That's important to me and planting the garden and watching it grow. Hello, I'm Kevin Ochsner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each week, we travel the country to bring you the latest cattle industry news and information. Check us out at cattlementocattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. It's time now for this week's legacy photos submitted by ranching families from around our great country. Let's take a look. You can send us pictures of your farm or ranch by visiting our website. That's cattleman Include your ranch or farm name and your hometown, and we may use them on a future episode. Well, that's our time for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.